Good morning, everybody. This is another unbox at the crack of dawn here. So as you can tell by the title, we finally got a dog bone uh, pendulum mount. I would have went with 034, and 034 if you're watching, I'm upset. They will not sell me or anybody a pendulum mount without an insert. I don't need an insert. I can't use an insert. Um, with the Verkline subframe, See if I find a picture here. It, it's a totally different. It's a totally different dog bone setup um, than OEM. So I can't, I can't use an insert. There's, there'd be no point. It doesn't fit. There's no for it, where for it to go. So the only one that I really trusted other than 034 was APR. So shout out to Sean and it's not stock. My boy, he's got these. Got this over here very quickly. I didn't even do like fast shipping or anything. So we got this. So what I've been thinking um, in my drive line, the only thing that's left really that's stock factory is the dog bone pendulum, the drive shaft carrier um, bearing. It's like the center bearing for the drive shaft since it's a multiple multi-piece drive shaft. Up in the middle, there's like a bearing, a bushing, and uh, JXB makes one. We're about to order that probably today actually. Um, so there's this, there's that, and then the, um, what do they call them, the struts and the rear strut mounts. That's the only things that are left. Um, obviously, all the rest of the suspension has changed. All the arms have been changed. All the subframes have been changed. Um, so I'm trying to get down to those last couple of pieces. So I've been thinking since I have the engine and trans mount from 034, I have the subframe from Verkline. So I have everything locked down up there in terms of like engine movement besides the arm. The factory arm, which we're about to go pull off, obviously, and we'll compare it, um, has in between here, you see how this, I don't know, I can't see the screen here, but this like rotates here. There is a rubber bushing in there in the factory. This one is a spherical bushing like the rest of my suspension. And this is serviceable, this is replaceable. You can hit up APR and get this replaced and whatnot if you need. But uh, yeah, this thing's nice. This is billet, shiny. Yep, smells like blood. You could probably lick it if you wanted to. It's clean. Um, yeah, so it's actually a really nice piece. And then what they provide you with, which I don't think anybody else does, and this gives it a slight advantage over 034 anyway, is the hardware that comes with it is all like ARP style reusable hardware. With everybody else, as far as I know, um, they're one-time use stretch bolts. So if these ever need to come out for any reason, if I need to drop the subframe, if I need to do, I don't know, any type of crazy maintenance, downpipe maybe or something, uh, you know, I don't have to buy new hardware. I got hardware that's good for life. And there's a torque value on their site. Um, yeah, right here, actually, it's got a little QR code. We'll go right to that and we'll get our torque values. I brought my big torque wrench home. I don't even know why I ever brought it to work. I work on aircraft and we have to have calibrated torque wrenches. So I, I, mine's not calibrated and I don't really care to calibrate a cobalt torque wrench. It's good for home. It'll be close enough, I believe. I don't, I don't think it'll be too far off being a non-calibrated, but um, yeah, so we got this. This is part of my uh, my thoughts of what are the last couple of small things I can do to lock down the drivetrain to run 10. So we got new tires that are bigger, wider, stickier, lighter. Well, actually, they're not lighter, but they will be lighter once they wear in. Um, we got this. We got that intake, which I, I, the, the intake video is what you guys are supposed to be watching right now, but... When I sent over the data to Blaze, they were like, holy freaking crap, that's amazing. Um, well, since you have an unbiased opinion now and you saw the data, we're gonna send you the second half of the intake um, for free. So they were, they were like, did you make the video yet? Can you wait to edit it? We'll send you this, this hose and then you can go out and do more data. So the next video, um, that should come sometime this week I can't guarantee it's the next video, but within the next couple videos, that will come out and we'll have the data with just the front half of the intake and then the full intake from Blaze and have all that data, which is really, really freaking awesome. I wanted to have that video out sooner, but 
it's going to be extra saucy now. All types of data. I got some some quotes from some people uh, reading my before and after data logs, and it's just really neat. And then this coming weekend, um, the weekend of Thanksgiving, we're going uh, up to Pine Valley Raceway. It's a bit east of me. It's like four hours. So I'll be getting up at like three in the morning to drive to a tri private track day on a Sunday and race all day and then drive four hours back. Uh, I guess hop in a shower and then go to work the next morning. So um, next weekend is going to be, it'd be nice to really have some days off. But uh, yeah, so I wanted this in. I'm hoping that JXB Carrier comes in before then too and we can get that on before we go. That way the drive line, the drive line's all locked down. And we're also about to order coilovers from EQT. Um, and then we'll get those uh, rear shock mounts as well. That way, everything will be done. And once those coilovers come, we can corner balance. I can remove with the Verkline arms. I'm just going on a rant here. With the Verkline arms, I have, I do my camera adjustment from the bottom, from the control arm. And because it's doing that, it's pulling out the bottom of the wheels rather than the top, pulling them in to get camber. So because they're pulled out so far from the bottom, um, I'm, I'm out of tie rod adjustment. So I can't even bring them in because, why couldn't I bring them in? Because something didn't fit right. Something, something binding or something, I don't remember exactly. Basically where they are is where they have to be. So once I get these coolovers, I'll be able to bring them in from the bottom um, and bring them in from the top. And well, I'm actually gonna take some camber out right now. I did that 11-11 at 124 with negative 3.7 degrees of camber up front and negative 2.1 rear camber and uh, front toe in, I think, and rear toe out. So we're gonna take a lot of the camber out. We're gonna knock it out by like half and pretty much zero out the um, toe. That way the rear end isn't as happy as well um, at autocross. So I think we're gonna keep it around two degrees front. We'll probably do about two degrees front and rear, maybe a little bit less in the rear. I need to do some calculations, but then we, we can corner balance after that. We can um, get rid of the front rake right now. My car's, the, the butt, the butt sits up way higher than the rear, or the butt, yeah, the rear sits way higher than the front, sorry. Tired, just woke up. Anyway, we're on a rant. Let's go out there, I'm gonna put the GoPro in the engine bay, show you guys a cold start, see how much the engine moves, and then we'll pull the car forward a little bit, put it up on the front jacks, Pull out the belly pan, three bolts out, pull out the thing, three bolts in, put this in, and then it'll probably be another cold start. We'll record that, and uh, well, once we get the old one out, we'll compare. Yeah, should be an easy, fun video. Thanks for the rant. Thanks for listening. All right, this is easier than I thought. I don't know why I thought I had to take the belly pan off. That does need to come off, and every bolt's an 18. I thought they were different sizes. I do have like a little adapter that slides in here that goes in this little gap um, from the back side. It has a 13 on it, but it was barely tight. Um, you can see here, I get to use my Wera wrench. Love this thing. That last video, you guys really liked. Um, or at least, maybe not you guys, but a lot of people did. Woo! Well, anyways, after dropping my phone, give this a few quick oogas. God, this thing is so small. It's 12 volt, it's teeny, and it's so freaking powerful. I love it. Takes off lug nuts. And this is with an adapter on it. You know, adapters cut the torque output by quite some. You know, this will be the tight one. Butter. I'm impressed. I love this little thing. I barely ever get to use it on anything like actually super tight. So now we have to pull out this little Actually, yeah, we gotta pull this guy out from the back somehow. Oh, you guys see my little drawing there? You guys see it? A little ween. This thing's probably gonna be stuck. I don't know if I have to take this screw completely out or not. I don't remember. She in there good though. Oh, yep, yeah, she's coming. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. All right. See this guy just like inserts, it has this bolt so you can like locate it. You don't even need to have this bolt in. It's just so you can hold on to and line it up. But this slips in to here to help keep this whole area from flexing. But as we can see here, it's got a rubber bushing in there. 
and it actually seems rather tight and not very loose. So this whole upgrade might have been pointless, but hey, it'll be in there, it'll be shiny. Let's go compare them. All right, real quick, we can get a comparison here on how they look. See, this is, it's real thin. I think it might actually be steel. This is like cast aluminum. Um, this is billet, you know, that's CNC material. This is probably also aluminum, but CNC. I'm not exactly sure. I'd have to put a magnet to it to know if it's actually whatever it is. But um, you can see the difference. Quite, uh, quite something. Well, like I said, this one, the old one, I thought would be, have a lot more play in here. It's actually quite, I mean, it's, it's not moving at all, left, right, up, down. Like, this thing's tight, tight. Like, I don't, I don't even know what's going on. You should be able to turn it. It's not. This one kind of moves freely, so. Maybe things will actually be smoother with this. Maybe I'll get less vibration with this, since it is actually able to, like, kind of move a little bit. I don't know. The power of the motor is way powerful than my hand, so. Who really knows? Hopefully this wasn't a waste of money. Um... At least I know it'll never break, I guess. And then I uh, get a look at the hardware here. Old versus new, new, old, new, old, new, old. So, it's a nice shiny new hardware. All right, get some pictures of this thing and then we'll look up the torque spec and shove it back in. I had to come back out and take the old one out. Just comparing the size of the washer for one, the washer on this, is a little bit smaller than the built-in washer on that. And of course the thread length here is way different. These, <clears throat> before it gets hand tight, is only about three threads. I don't really like that. This is, this seems more ideal. We're gonna try it and torque it, see if I like it, but we might just go back to this. So I decided I'm gonna reuse the factory dog bone uh, the bigger one and just by hand I can get this thing threaded through the entire way to the top and feel it at the top of this bushing whereas the other one I said like I said it's only like barely two threads in and when you put your pinky in there it's gonna be like yanking on just like the bottom of this the bottom like quarter of this bushing and I don't want that I want that 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 stress to be yeah, over the, the entire bushing, not just the bottom. I don't want to like prematurely wear this thing. I don't want to have to drop the subframe and, and, and pull these inserts out. It's kind of dumb that they provided a, a short bolt. I'm actually like really kind of upset about that because now I don't have a new bolt to put in. I'm gonna have to reuse a bolt that you're supposed to throw away. So now I'm gonna have to order one. And that's just it's, it's annoying to say the least. But anyway, um, now that I'm done crying about that, um, yeah, it goes in like this. So this will go in here, this will go here. The one with the, uh, yeah, the long one goes in the thicker part here. We'll just set that there, get that hand threaded. It's a 10 millimeter. I believe it said like 57 foot pounds or something. So we brought the torque wrench home, so we'll actually, what we should do, I'm backwards. We should do the big bolt first, because these um, really don't line up. So we're going to put the bolt in here, and then we're going to have to like, uh, well, I got my big wrench here, because I'm going to go like this and pull the engine forward to get these bolts to line up. We don't want to have to do it with that one. That one's annoying to, to deal with, so... We'll go ahead and just probably time lapse this. All right, guys, we are all torqued and torque striped. Let's get the light back up here. 
There we go. Nice bright light. Man, looks good in there, don't it? That's a nice unit. Let's the light. There we go. That is a nice unit. Nice and clean. Nice branding on it. Looks great. I wish my subframe was clean so it would match, but uh, this fur clan stuff's awesome. I got a couple boots I got to replace. Eventually, I got to keep lubing them up. You can see I just, while I was under here, I was like, oh, I'll throw some more lube on some things and whatever. Everything looks kind of crusty because it's dirty, but uh, yeah, she's in there. Again, shout out to Sean. You're the man, buddy. It's not stock. I love you. Uh, we'll be ordering up that JXB probably today. And hopefully we'll have that by by Thanksgiving. It'll be pretty easy. We just got to drop some of these shields off that have some holes in them. Drop this center uh, pipe out, the mid pipe. That foil stuff comes down. And then the drive shaft carrier is that guy right there. It goes up and holds the drive shaft. And there's bolts on the other side. You got to cut it out. And then the new one's like a, a multi-piece design that you can just slip right on. So anyway. There we are, she's in, I'm happy. Uh, I'm gonna get changed so I'm not dragging a bunch of dirt in the car and we'll fire her up here in a bit and uh, see if it's gonna rattle our teeth or not. Getting inside there, doesn't feel any different in the driver's seat in terms of vibration on cold start. Really the, the main tail will be like on the brake. Um, like with the AC on, that's when the rattling and, 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 and NVH is the worst, but I don't feel any difference. Maybe even less. No, I don't know. Maybe I gotta put down a crack pipe. It kinda does feel less. Interesting. I'll let you guys know more on this drive. Uh, the oil's warm. I've gotten to do a couple pulls. Um, this, it's no joke, it is smoother. I don't, it doesn't make sense in, in my In three quarters head. of a mile, keep right onto I-10 really? west toward El Paso. Because of, you know, it's it's billet, there's a the spherical bushing in there, it should be stiffer, right? But I guess, because I showed you guys, I couldn't move the other dog bone. Maybe that was like a station, that was, that was a bushing that wasn't meant to ever move. Um, so there was like always tension on it, like it couldn't really, I don't know. Maybe because Use the moves. right two lanes to keep right onto I-10 West toward El Paso. Moves freely, it's just smoother. Like shifts feel smoother, the idle feels smoother. I need to get to where I'm going and, and I guess pop the AC on or something. Um, keep right. Okay, shouldn't have did that. In three quarters of a mile, take exit 155B onto Cesar E. Chavez Boulevard toward downtown. Don't vlog and drive, people. You're Take exits, you weren't, I said stay right, so I stayed right. Anyway, it feels great. Okay, I guess I can do it right now. Um, oh my God. Put the AC at max. Usually the car is like vibrating like crazy. No way, I, was, well, I am in sport. So there is some vibration, but nothing like it was before. Holy shiitake mushrooms. I am impressed. That is crazy. Back in sport, turn the air off. Wow. I wish I could rip on it down here. I don't know where the heck I'm at. And I'm glad I didn't because there's a big old, big old bump right here. Jeez. Anyway. Um, Jess's first thoughts here. I mean, we haven't launched the car yet. That's where it really freaking matters. But for daily ability, I am shocked. Why didn't I do this forever ago? Along with these, these tires being taller and a softer sidewall, it makes taking bumps and like everything is just so, the car feels like butter now. Like it was a little rough before and I liked it because it, you know, it feels raw, it feels good. But like the harshness sometimes was like, when you're trying to chill, it's like, damn, this thing is a little, a little over the fence when it comes to like daily driver comfortability. I guess like, you know, when you're tired and annoyed, long day at work, you know, yada, yada, yada. 
get into a rough ride isn't always like the most enjoyable thing. But now with these two things, like, what the hell? What is going on? In three quarters of a mile, turn I, left onto I'm West Houston Street. Legitimately shocked. And I am so happy. I could do a launch right here. I got like all the stuff in the back and my coffee. We're in sport. I won't launch it, but I'll give her some beans here off the line and we'll end with that. Like I am, what the hell? <laughs> wow. Like it's so smooth right now. <laughs> no way. It feels good. It feels really good. I'm surprised how the lack of, or how much kind of turbo lag there is. I, I barely ever punch it from, from the, a, a stop without launch control so all right i'm getting into some nasty construction here i'm gonna stay call in the it, second lane from right call it good from here damn sean it's not stock thank you apr shout out to you for making a freaking stellar pro product this is like i'm serious i highly 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 recommend it like i said but i have the verkline stuff as you guys know so my dog bone you know bushings are a lot different and I, I have 034, the street sport stuff. Um, wow. This is awesome. I am, God dang. Well, really need coilovers at this point because I'm on soft and hitting these. You guys hear how harsh those bumps are. Like these struts are just, they're, they're at the end of their life. I guess I can't go straight here. What am I doing? Where am I going? I do not like this. I really wish Stay I in the second lane from right. Not miss my turn. Anyway. That's all I got, guys. Again, shout out to Sean. I love you. This is awesome. I'm stoked. And uh, I guess look out for the next video. A lot of exciting stuff going on. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you on the flip-flop.